Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today after almost one month we are back so i feel like i owe you guys a little bit of an explanation so if you guys want to just hop into the vid the timestamp is going to be on the screen for when we get into the games but uh just for a little bit of an explanation there's been a lot uh that's been going on in the last month um because of what happened the first month in brawl esports where we got knocked out in the semifinals because of tribe this next month is really important for us you guys know i love doing content i love streaming i love all of that but in my heart of hearts, competing is like the number one thing for me. I love it so much. Uh, I have so much fun. You know, losing is not fun, but win or lose, I enjoy training. I enjoy getting better and I just enjoy competition. Um, and there's a mid-season invitational uh, after three months of esports that the best teams from all around the world are going to fly out to. It's kind of a mini worlds, but instead of 16 teams, only eight teams. So it's the very, very, very top elite teams in the world. I really want to go to it. As far as I know, North America only has one spot. Uh, there's rumors that we might get two, which would be awesome. But so far, we only know about one spot, I think. So, um, you know, we had to really, we had to do really well in this upcoming month. There was a lot of drama um, that affected us to do with, you know, Blood Diamond. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about that situation. To, you know, quickly summarize it, uh, they kind of forced the West server you know, it wasn't necessarily technically against the rules exactly what they did, but they also was against the rules at the same time. It was really fine print type of stuff. I think the admins did make the correct decision to disqualify them. Um, but I mean, they're still my friends. They're still, you know, pretty good people, all that. No hate to them. Uh, but them getting DQ'd kind of helped us out because they added a Texas server to the game. And what this Texas server did was basically make it fair between East and West, which is really awesome. You don't connect to California. You don't connect to a server all the way on the East Coast. Just something basically in the middle, uh, which is all anyone's been asking for. So that's really awesome that we have that now. Um, but yeah, to piggyback off of that, we kind of... Well, I was pretty stressed out because how the servers work in North America, at least, is, you know, there's an East, a West, and a South. Um, I'm from Toronto, Canada, which I don't think is really a great spot. My teammate OG and Tooney also from Toronto, Canada And then Zar being from Mexico, so we're not really in the greatest spot server wise uh, We were facing a team that you know connects to the Miami server Which is pretty far considering we're in Canada, which is obviously on the top and then Miami's all the way on the bottom um, So we were gonna get you know kind of screwed over facing them and then if we win that we were going to have to face Blood Diamond, which we would connect all the way to the Los Angeles server, which again is pretty far from us. So um, we were trying to fly out, kind of. We were speaking with our org. Uh, you know, maybe we could fly somewhere to not, you know, get screwed over to not, um, you know, have delay every single game we face. And that, you know, was pretty stressful as, you know, I'm 22 which is also something i didn't say because i haven't made any videos um my birthday passed let me see what day it is birthday passed 12 days ago so you know happy birthday to me i guess uh i'm 22 now um but yeah um bd got disqualified so we didn't have to face a west team anymore so we decided you know like kind of very last minute we're just gonna fly out uh to south carolina because we have good ping there to miami to east to texas no matter who we faced or what happened we would have good ping uh which is a really 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 big advantage which i don't want to get too much into but it's like a different game over there than it is here uh but regardless um it was just very stressful a lot of work and then obviously i'm scrimming four hours a day i still did my twitch streams for the most part so there was just not really that much time to do youtube and then on top of that there's just not that much content to make um you know power league which is kind of my bread and butter on youtube wasn't really that big this uh this season i don't know when the next one is i think it's around 10 days but it this season lasted like three days there's no like new content new anything that came out new updates so i really had a lack of content so i was just kind of putting all my eggs in one basket and you know just focused on competitive for a little while so yeah that's kind of what happened uh so i'm sorry for not uploading i'm very thankful that you guys are always dming me on twitter dming me on discord leaving comments on my videos that are a month old you know asking how i am asking where i am if i'm okay if i'm healthy if i'm fine so i appreciate all of you love all of you all of that uh, but with that being said, you know, let's just hop into the games and uh, let's show you guys what happened. 
Okay, I just realized I didn't do an intro for the video. So the video is going to be our finals games versus Tribe. Uh, Tribe, as you guys know, has been our main competition, I think, for two years now. It's been quite a long time. You know, they're all really good players. Um, they've made some changes to their roster. They now have his Livy, which is a really, really strong player. Really, really good player. Uh, really nice guy. I like him a lot. Um, and they're just a really strong team. I decided you know at the start of the year i was going to keep track of our record versus tribe this year um so far they're two and one against us they got a win i think three days ago against us in queso finals they actually swept us which was pretty uh humiliating to say the least i do not like getting swept whatsoever so um we had you know some feeling of revenge in us that we wanted to get um and so yeah, let's just hop into the games. I guess no more explaining to do and let's get it started. So going into game number one, just to explain quickly, it's a best of five, best of three. You guys already know that there's five modes that you play. The first one to win three game or two games, sorry, in a mode takes the mode. And then once you win three modes, you win. Uh, the first map is going to be double swoosh. So we actually scrimmed the finals map zero times uh, because we just wanted to put a lot of emphasis on winning round one and two and getting to the finals and just getting our points for the month. Luckily for us, Double Swoosh was a map that we did scrim a lot, though, because it was also one of our round one maps. So we had some pretty good practice here. We ended up getting the first pick. So with the first pick, what we did was we banned Mr. P because they just automatically ban Eve. Eve being the best brawler in the game on basically any map. Um, and we ended up getting Gene without, you know, Gene counters. They followed up with Crow Byron. We then went Fang because the lanes are pretty squishy, pretty easy for Fang to take spike as well and then they went squeak so i think we have comp by a little bit but they have a pretty nice comp themselves um it's currently 5-3 right now so it's a little bit hard for og to get a super but once he does get a super it's pretty easy for him to you know kind of just super onto whoever and get a kill uh czar should be winning his lane right there but you know zulan he's kind of like the spike god right now in na um, you know, he's very good at playing Spike. He's very good at playing against Spike. So he knows what he's doing. Uh, and he's winning a pretty hard lane over there. Zard does switch over, though, and get a kill onto Tyrant, which is very, very helpful for us. As it kind of allows OG to just walk up, you know, a little bit uncontested and get a super. And this game, this game gets very crazy. So it's 6-8 right now. How gem grab works now is the gem spawn one side, then the other side, then one side, then the other side. So they get a spawn. So basically, you kind of just pick up the gems on your side. Um, and you leave the gems on the other side and then you kind of just hope for the best um, You hope you you know, maybe steal one or two gems from them So OG knows it's gonna spawn on their side. He loads up his super he supers onto his Livy over there and he ever So barely gets him if he doesn't get that kill I'm pretty sure we lose that game, but he kills him on like a hundred HP um, And this allows us to reset now so we get the not this gem spawn But the next gem spawn we need to get both the next gems So OG's just gonna walk up having the shield and that much HP and pick it up uh, the next gem spawns, OG's gonna pick it up as well. Zar gets a kill on Zulan, which is really big, and then OG goes down, which, you know, is not very cool. Zar goes down, which is also not very cool, but we did end up taking down Tyrant over there. OG is gonna ignore the gems on our side because, you know, those gems are gonna pick it up anyways. We have to get the one in the middle to stop the countdown. Uh, Zulan's gonna get a kill over there, so at this point, you know, it's, it's kind of anyone's game right now. We get the next spawn. They have control, um, and we really need this next gem spawn. Zulan almost gets it. He basically just walks in the middle and doesn't pick up a gem. That was, you know, kind of a peculiar play in my eyes. Like, if you're going to walk in the middle and be one tile away from the gem, might as well pick up the gem. Uh, Zulan goes down over there. Zar goes down. I go down. And now OG picks up his super, which is so clutch. As it's 14-13 right now, we get the next gem spawn. So Zar is just going to waddle on over. He's going to pick up the gem. They get the next gem spawn now, though, which is really scary for us. OG walks over, picks up the gem, supers back. He goes down. Zar, I think, gets Zulan. He does. I think he gets Tyrant. He does. Izlivi gets me. And with three seconds left, basically with one second left, OG picks up the 15 gems. And the game went the entirety of the gem grab timer, which basically never happens. Although it did happen last monthly final when we faced Tribe and they ended up winning. Uh, so we ended up getting it this time, but that was like the most insane first game of a finals I think I've ever played. Uh, so yeah, one nothing us. Let's get into the next game and let's get this one, you know, let's keep it going. So getting into the next game here, um, everyone's kind of just stressed out at this point. We just played, you know, a very intense 
game. Uh, so everyone's kind of, you know, uneasy right now. Is Libby kind of lets me walk up and just kill him to start the game, which is uh, very cool as I basically have my supercharge. This allows OG to kind of just walk up because Tyrant has no one really protecting him. And uh, he can basically get a super. We have a 4-0 lead to start off the game, which is really good. This is a really strong start for us. Really awesome. Uh, and then on top of that, I'm very close to my super. So facing this comp, it's hard to pull. It's very hard to pull. I'm not pulling Zulon as a crow. I'm not pulling the Byron on the right. So basically, the only guy I can pull is his Livy. Um, and his Livy's playing this one very patient. His Livy's, you know, been an insane player this year throughout the entirety of the year so far. Uh, his positioning's pretty good, and so it was pretty hard to, like, pull him. He doesn't really overcommit too much. Uh, so I go for a lot of blind pulls. I don't know if you guys noticed last game. I made sure I didn't say anything, but I did go 0 for 3 on pulls. You guys didn't see that. Um, but, you know, OG with the Fang, I feel like we really... The Fang pick was, like, insane. Like, we really don't pick Fang that often, often. But uh, on this map, and with the comps and all that, like, the Fang pick was just so good. It, it was so clutch. We got a 9-0 lead right now. They just can't do anything once Fang gets super is the issue here. So now we're just playing this really slow. It's 9-0. You know, we get some gem spawns every other time. So we know we don't have to overcommit. We don't have to do anything silly. OG moves over. He gets the kill on Tyrant. Zar gets slowed. And although I really want to go get that gem, I don't really want to risk getting hit by a squeak super and dying and throwing the game. So I'm kind of just taking my time. I can tell Zar wants that gem over there, but he's not going to pick it up. Now it's 9-4. They got to pick up every gem, and here is where I kind of get lucky with a blind pull. I knew his Livy was going to go for that gem because, well, I didn't know, actually. It was a blind pull, but I just assumed he was going for that gem. Um, probably a really bad play on my end, to be honest, as they were running out of, like, gadgets and running out of supers and stuff like that. And if I just held pull, um, it probably would have been pretty easy to just pick up the next gem. But, you know, I was I was feeling a little bit dangerous, so I went for the blind pull, uh, got lucky, got lucky it hit, and we ended up winning the game. OG played out of his mind that set, uh, definitely MVP of that set for sure. He played really well. Uh, the clutch, you know, 29th gem and run away. The clutch picking up the 15 gems, winning his lane on the bad side. Like, he, he just did a really good job. So, good job to OG. Uh, one nothing us, so on to the next set. Let's get into it. So, moving on to the next set, we got Sneaky Fields, which again is a map that we weren't scrimming because it's finals maps. We weren't really practicing this, but we had a few games on it since one of the teams that we were scrimming somewhat often uh, played these maps round one. So we got some good practice on it. We ended up getting second pick. So we banned Eve because, you know, you're forced to ban Eve if you don't have first pick. Um, and we got Crow, Dog, and Leon. So here I get a really nice triple slow. And anytime you get a triple slow in competitive, it's kind of like a GG. It's like... Gonna, it's just really easy to do everything. Um, so we get a really good first goal. I like their comp a lot. They have such a good comp. Uh, the way Zulan plays Max here, I don't know um, if the coach told him to do that, if Zulan just knows to do that or whatever it may be. Um, but him gadgeting into that left pocket is such a good play. But you guys can see here, once we open up the map, it becomes a lot easier for us to just kind of control the game and do all that. You guys can see it's wide open. Zar is doing an insane job on Izlivi's lane. Izlivi is a cracked M's. He's a very crazy M's. He's known for his M's. Um, so he's doing a good job. But yeah, their comp is really good. It's really tough to beat. OG on his low ping Leon, which is like an insane brawler on low ping. Like the interactions are just so different. Um... With, like, OG getting a double kill somehow. I don't even know how he did that. There's no way he's doing that at home. Um, I, I really can't get over the ping that that we got, or that we got playing this. Uh, but, yeah, we kind of just ran through him. Game number one. Didn't really talk about the game that much. My fault. But, uh, yeah, it was a really quick game number one. Basically, perfectly played by us. Games two and three, though, not so much. So, let's hop into it and show you guys exactly what happened. So, I've obviously watched these games back before recording this YouTube video as I'd like to, you know, figure out what happened, see how we can play better, stuff like that. So, what they did was they sent Zulon onto this left side, and I basically couldn't hit him. So, I'm going to go back and kind of give you, like, guys, like, a little bit of an in-depth, like, analysis type of thing over here. So, you guys can see Zulon just dashes into that left side. And at the start of the game, Zar is using his gadget, Boom Boom Dog, to kind of push his Livy back. So, I think here, Zar should just move over left, like he is right now, and just pinch the lanes. He's doing a really good job. You guys can see we got the double slow. His Livy's forced to move up again. And there we go. We have our lanes. OG does go down, um, but I think... You know, we, we got mid control. That was really good. Now, our mistake here was Zar broke 
the right side. I don't think we need the right side broken. I think we need the left side broken because Sandy can wall peek way better than OG can wall peek on the Leon. Um, it's just, you know, the makes of the brawlers. So now Tyrant, you know, he's able to get a pretty easy kill on us. Oh, my fault. Let me fix the camera angle. Um, and their comp, like I said, it's it's better than our comp by a little bit. Um, Tyrant messes up the goal over there, and we could definitely save this, but we don't. And again, you know, Zar, I respect the effort. You know, he was feeling a little bit dangerous, uh, so he wanted to try and make the save. But we should save that break for the left side, as again, Zulan's going to do the same thing. He's going to move to that left side, and I can't do anything. I just, I can't hit him. If I overcommit, his Livy's just going to kill me, or Tyrant's going to come over and kill me. Um, so they're kind of just bullying OG's lane again. Don't know if that was Zulan's idea, you know, Corey's idea. Corey watches the games and is pretty intelligent, uh, with that stuff. Roll's idea, who's their coach, but whoever's idea it was, it was, it was really smart because I could not do anything this game. Um, Zara's gonna break his side over here, but Zulan's just gonna pass the ball up. Is Livy, he's got the ball. There's really nothing we can do, so that's gonna be game number two. We're going to try and make adjustments in the next game. So let's hop into it and show you guys what happened in game number three. All right. So on to game three. Again, Zulan's going to do the exact same thing. Zara's going to do the exact same thing. And is Livy's going to... Oh, my God. Is Livy got hit by three uh, of the dog... We just call it Boom Boom Dog. So we're just going to keep calling it. He got hit by three Boom Boom Dog Rockets. Um, and he's going to get low. We like The fact that his Livy lived right here, I think, is not okay. I took two shots at him. OG took three shots at him. He was under 1k HP and he lived. So that is not allowed to happen. That should never happen. Um, OG, he's going to go down to Tyrant over there. I think he got a little bit over aggressive. Probably should have just healed up. But you know what? I do respect the aggressiveness because, you know, it's, you know what? Just screw it. Like, let's just get aggressive. Um, it's been working so far, so I not keep doing it. Zara's going to break that left side, but by doing so, is Livy's going to be able to kill him. I sneak over on this left side, so I feel like I'm kind of in a sneaky location here. Um, but then, you know, Tyron's like, hi, you know, I, I know you're here. Um, and he's going to get me low. Ball gets put into the corner. OG uses his super to stay alive, but that M super is just so strong. It's so good. Zulan's going to be able to get a kill on me. They're using gadgets, supers, all that stuff, but they're going to be able to get the kill. Put the ball in the net, and now with a minute 15 left, it's one nothing tribe. But we have an open left side, so we got some room to work with here. Um, we got some stuff that we can do. I can actually help out that left side, and Zulan can't just hide behind that box. Um, the issue is, though, they got max speed. They got M super, so they're very dangerous in the mid right now. Um, I'm going to pop a double slow. I'm going to jump basically into nothing, but, you know, we do end up getting a trade there. OG is going to... Oh, I think he tried to get the treat. Doesn't end up getting the treat. They're on that left side. We have the right side kind of on lockdown. Um, so, you know, we're making our way. We're doing pretty good. If the map was open, I feel like this is kind of how the game would go. We just have to break this left side and then we'll slowly, slowly push him back. But at this point, they have super cycle. Uh, we don't have any gadgets left outside of myself. And it's just really hard to kill them when they got the max speed and the sandy supers and all that type of stuff. Uh, we do get one kill. OG gets the kill over there on his Livy, and here, I mean, this is this is a tough situation right here because you guys see, um, Zara uses his super to break the left. I said he should use his super to break one of the posts and then shoot it in, but Tyrant is invincible, so it's not like they'll like knock him back or anything. And on top of him being invisible, he also has a or invincible. They also have a stun. They corner the ball, but I get the ball in the corner. I pass it to Zar. Unfortunately, though, they're going to clear it. Really good defense by them. You know, I, I give them a clapping crow pin. You know, good defense. Um, really good comp. Just really well played by them. I think we could have won if we played game two a little bit smarter. Um, or game three, actually. But they ended up winning. They deserve the win. So it's 1-1 now. So let's hop onto the next set, which is Bell's Rock. And uh, let's get into it. So the story with Bell's Rock is a little bit funny. We actually haven't played this map in about a month. Uh, we played it one time in Queso Cup uh, versus a team that we're... I don't think we've ever lost to. We're pretty confident against them. Uh, so we kind of just fooled around. I think we played like Carl or something. I don't know. Uh, but for an actual competitive match, we a we actually had no clue what to go. Like, I had zero idea what's... Like, I know what's, you know, somewhat good here. I I'm sure Gene's good here. Throwers are good. The dog is good. Gale's good. Pam's good. Byron, you know, brawlers like that. But we did it. We had no comps. We had no strategy going into this, which is probably something that we shouldn't do going forward because we're supposed to be a professional team. 
Um, but yeah, we ended up getting Sprout, Gene, and Pam, which I think is a good comp. I mean, it looks really good. Um, on paper, is Livy's gonna kind of overcommit there because I was one shot or two shot or whatever and he wanted the kill. OG's gonna pinch over. He's gonna hit two really nice shots. One of them actually, actually like just passed by the wall to hit his Livy, so it was really nice. We pinch Tyrant, get the kill, and Zara's doing a good job holding it down on that left side with Pam. Um, so he's gonna be able to get the kill. And now it's one nothing us. There's a couple embarrassing moments in this, uh, in this set, one by me, one by OG, uh, which I, you know, don't really want to show you guys, especially mine, but we're going to anyways. Um, so yeah, right here, I'm kind of close to a pull. You know, I'm feeling a little bit dangerous. I'm doing my thing. Tyrant got his super. Um, so he's, you know, or not his super, sorry. Z not Zulan. Tyrant got his super, so he's feeling a little bit dangerous. I go down over there to Zulan. Um, really nice play by him. Good super. And now Tyrant's powered up and... The reason we last picked Sprout, and the reason we last picked Sprout is because it is so good on this map, we assume, because there's walls, into the dog and into Gale. Um, so when we had him on Tyrant and Tyrant was powered up, it was it was kind of useless because then we just had a Pam versus a Gale and then a dog versus a Gene, which is countered. So we had to get our lanes right. So they won that really easily when they got their lanes right. Okay, so I said something wrong, so don't mind the cut. Uh, but anyways, into the third round here, um, you know, I decide, let's get dangerous, let's go for a max range pull, I pull a tick head, um, you know, but it's a 100 IQ play, because I get Tyrant to use his tick head, and I get his Livy to use his last pair of bags, I know I'm carrying the team, no need to thank me, uh, but yeah, that was a pretty bad pull, um, but, you know, it kind of works out, because now we got Zar pushing back his Livy, we got OG pushing back his Livy, they 2v1 him really well, so, you know, thank you for, you know, us not, you know, losing because of me. I thank my teammates right there. Uh, and now they're just kind of weak, you know, they're low 80% of the time, according to Ash BS. Whoever gets the first kill in knockout wins, so we are just like, all right, let's not throw. Let's take our time. OG gets another good shot over there. We get a kill, and now we're like, okay, let's not get 3v1 by a tick. Let's not get 3v1 by a tick. And we don't get 3v1 by a tick. So it's going to be one nothing for us right now in Knockout. We totally assumed that this set was just an automatic loss when we saw the finals maps. Uh, but we get the first set. So let's hop into the second set or second game, not set. And uh, let's show you guys what happened. So going into game number two, we kind of figured out our strategy here, which was let's not throw. Let's get OG on his Livy or on the get or on the dog or on the gale and let's just have him carry um he's gonna get onto tyrant's lane so we're gonna have him switch they're trying to keep up with the switches which they actually did a pretty good job of keeping up with the switches but because we had a gene and a pam which is just so much hp gene also with the healing and stuff like that it's just hard for them to switch because they end up getting backed up when they get backed up you know they have a roughs they have a gale they don't really have something that does a ton of damage necessarily um, so it's a little bit difficult for them to hold us off, which was kind of, I think, their downfall here. So I guess really good drafting by us, even though we had no clue what to draft. Uh, again, we switch. So as you guys can see, Tyrant's trying to switch. The other two are trying to switch. But what ends up happening is they all just get into one corner here. Uh, OG's doing a really good job at hitting shots. Don't watch this. Don't watch this. Don't watch this, OG. All right, guys, let's watch it again, actually. Um, we end up getting a kill. And by we, I mean, I think OG does. Never mind. I get the kill, but basically OG... And then he misses a tick head. Um, that's a little bit embarrassing. I don't know if it's more embarrassing than my pull or not, but he misses the tick head, uh, which is something we've been joking around with a little bit. Uh, but regardless, they're low. Zar gets his turret. I'm screaming, Zar, throw your turret on them. He throws the turret. Uh, we end up getting two kills here. So Zar basically carried this. Uh, OG did really great until he missed the tick head. Um, and uh, he's going to throw up a pin, and that's going to be. Round number one for us here. So we just got to win one more. So again, same strategy. We're going to try and get the switch here. And when we try and get the switch, they try and get the switch. And you guys can see they're backing up. They're backing up. We're just moving forward. They're backing up. They're backing up. I think this is really just an outdraft, to be honest. Uh, I got my pull. Zulan knows that. He's got no way of countering the pull. So he's kind of just trapped over there. You know, I don't want to miss my pull. I really don't want to miss my pull. I go for the pull. I don't miss my pull. We end up getting the kill. And now it's kind of like, let's not throw this game. OG gets the kill. Uh, me and Zar get the tick head. Take notes, OG. Um, but yeah, it's a 3v1 here. Once the 3v1 game is kind of over. So we get the kill. Game number two done. Goes in our favor. So that's going to be a 2-1 lead for us. The game 
or the map I should say we thought we had no chance of winning. We actually won pretty easily. Um, again, OG did really well. Zar did really well. I pulled the tick head. So, you know, really big shout out to my teammates. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next set and let's keep it going. Oh, and I forgot about this before we get into the next game. Uh, shout out to ESL for this trophy. Uh, this is my first Brawl Stars trophy, which it's, it's actually pretty big. It's like, it's bigger than my head. So, you know, pretty nice trophy. It says uh fall 2021 champion so it did come you know a little bit late but it's it's a nice trophy i like it again it's my first brawl stars trophy besides my mvb or most valuable whatever it's called i forgot uh but yeah really cool trophy so shout out esl but let's hop into the fourth set which is parallel plays show you guys what happened all right so into set number four parallel plays this was a uh kind of an interesting draft um i think they yeah they first picked byron we ended up going the dog and Pam because we think the dog and the Pam are pretty good. And we faced, we played this map in round two and the Pam was very strong. Like very, very, very strong. We faced the Pam, we somehow won. We shouldn't have won, but it was so good. Um, so we went that, they ended up going Leon Spike, which I don't know if those were the picks to be honest. Reason I don't think so is because the same things that counter Byron are the same things that counter Spike. So you got, you know, Mr. P, Sprout, Squeak, you know, Throwers, whatever it may be. Um, we kind of, They kind of just doubled down on it. They said, okay, like, you can kind of counter us twice. We like these Brawlers, you know, let's just, let's go with it. Uh, we had a few options. Originally, we were going to Sprout, but then we decided to go Mr. P. The reason we went Mr. P is because we have the dog. The dog, you know, it gives treats. Treats make you stronger. So over the course of a game, when you have a dog, you kind of just slowly, slowly, you know, get stronger, stronger, and then push them back slowly, slowly. That's the same thing with, or not with Sprout, sorry, with uh, Mr. P. You get your porters, you know, you get strong, you get stronger, um, you slowly, slowly push them back. So we thought, you know, let's just play at the start kind of calm, let's relax, let's get powered up, let's get our porters, let's do all of that. And then the Mr. P is also really good into Byron and Spike in general, so... We really liked our comp here. Um, the issue though is Tyrant's doing really well and I think we have our lanes wrong here. I went mid, Zara's defense, and then OG aggro. I don't know if necessarily OG aggro is the problem, but I think me mid is probably the issue because I have to get my dog treats. I have to, you know, power up my team. And I feel like mid against the Byron is probably not the best way to do that. This is only my second treat of the game and we're already two minutes of the way in so you know not the greatest of starts for us but we are working our way back we do have czar powered up now we i think we have porter somewhere on the map maybe not we might okay we do have porter somewhere on the map so we're we're making our way you know we're slowly pushing them back you guys can see they have a 10 percent lead but now we're gonna put our porters even higher up I'm going to go down to his Livy, but we got the porters, we got the setup, so we do have a very legitimate chance to win here. We're very set up here. Now Tyrant only has one cactus left, I believe, so we're starting to use gadgets, we're starting to push up. His Livy does pop his invis, and he's going to go right. I think he sneaks onto me. No, he just sneaks on the right. He gets exposed by a porter. He takes out the porters, but he's low. Zulan's low. He goes down. Tyrant's low, and I really think we could win, um, but... Zar is low. Zulan was probably just tapping him, hitting a lot of shots. So I think if Zar was winning his interaction on the left side of the map versus Zulan, he we probably win this game. But the issue is, you know, Zulan's a Byron. He can kind of just poke. Uh, it's a lot easier for him to shoot between angles rather than like a Pam, which has that weird like spray shot. So they take game number one, really well played for them. We make a couple adjustments. So let's go into game number two, show you guys what happened. So going into game number two, we switch it up a little bit. I think I maybe go aggro. Yeah, I go aggro and then OG is going to be mid. And the reason for this is, you know, we just we just want more dog treats. It's, that's really it. We want the dog treats earlier. We want them faster. And if I go aggro, you know, you can go aggro and die. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with going aggro and die. But when you're the middle and when you're the defense, you're not allowed to die. Your job is not to die. Um, so I'm just going to move up. I'm going to try my very best to get treats as fast as I can. Uh, Tyrant's doing a good job on my side, but I think I'm one shot away. Maybe I might be one shot. I think I am. 
Maybe not. I don't know. But Zar gets a kill over there. Okay, I got my super. OG got his. So we both got our supers a lot faster than we did game one. So this is a much better start for us. Even though we're down, how this map kind of works in competitive is everyone gets 50% of their zone. So I get 50% of, of my... Or we get 50% of our zone. They get 50% of their zone. And then, you know, we kind of just see who can get each other's zone the most percentage. Um, I give the treat to myself and then I go down... Bad idea. Probably should have given it to Zara or to OG. Um, but, you know, a power-up dog is actually really strong. So I wanted to give it to myself. But I ended up going down to the Invisalion and the Byron Super. So, mistake on my end. Uh, but Tyrant does give me my treat back fairly fast. I'm just going to throw it down over there. There was an Invisalion though. So, Zara and OG are going to take care of that. Zara's going to get the power-up because he's a big, you know, beefy Pam. Let's just give it to the Pam and get it all strong and all you know a lot of hp make it kind of a menace for them to deal with tyrant's pushing me back really well but i recently did learn how to juke curveball so i'm doing a pretty good job at doing so and staying alive tyrant's close to giving me another super um i think i'm two shots or something away we got the porters down we're getting kind of powered up here we're getting some kills so they have a one percent lead but we're taking this really slowly. We're saying, you know, we got time. No need to rush. Let's get rid of their Leon gadgets. Let's get rid of their, you know, all their gadgets. Let's get the porter set up. Let's get everything set up. And then we're going to go in. So you guys can see we now have the aggro porter. His Livy is invisible. And he does kill me. But what does that do exactly? It kind of, you know, just gives me super. He ends up going down. We have a rough super. Uh, Zulan is going to get caught lacking over there by OG. OG's going to pick up the kill. And now he has control of that zone. We got the porters in the zone now. We got two people powered up and we have them spawn trapped. So this is pretty much GG on this map. This is exactly what we were looking for with our comp. Let's just slowly, slowly, slowly push them back. And then once we have them spawn trapped, once we're powered up with the porter and everything, that's where we take control. That's where we win the game. And that's exactly what happened. So what we planned for happened this game. Maybe it was the lane switch that did it. I'm not sure. Maybe it was, you know, that we just played better. I don't know. But we take this match. We are now on match point, so let's hop into the next game and let's show you guys what happens in that next game. So going into the next game, the last game on parallel here, again, same strategy. Let's, you know, just get our supers, slowly win the game. Um, so yeah, we're doing our thing. I hit a couple shots on Tyrant. Look at this curveball dodging, guys. I know, so crazy. I learned how to dodge curveball. Um, but yeah, I'm hitting a couple shots over here, trying to get a little bit sneaky. I get my super very early i think i'm one shot away from it here come on come on i think so maybe yeah there we go i get my super we get two really early kills i didn't know his livy was invis though which sucks i wish i knew his livy was invis uh but he goes over and he kills me doesn't matter though i did my job i got my super in like 30 seconds i'm gonna give it to myself though because i'm just gonna ego it uh and i want to be a strong little dog instead of a weak little dog um, but we're kind of set up. They're pushing us back really well here. So this is, you know, kind of looking scary because if you get the zone this early, it is not good. It's not good whatsoever. I'm doing my very best to stay alive. I really don't want to die because I gave myself the treat. Zara is going to take a little bit of his Livy's ammo over there. I'm going to get very low. Zara gets the kill over there on his Livy. I'm low. OG and myself, I think both hit Zulan once or twice. I don't know. He gets low. OG dies, but it's fine. They don't get too much of our zone, maybe like 6% or something. I'm not sure, maybe 7. Uh, but I'm powered up, Zar's powered up, and we have penguins. And we just started this game. We got a minute and a half. So we're saying to ourselves, you know, we got time. We have time, don't worry. Zulon, same thing that happened last game. He's going to kind of lose track of where everyone is, and he's going to go down. And when he goes down, that makes things really easy for us. We just pinch his Livy. His Livy gets really low. Tyrant gets really low. We force him into a corner. I get another tree. You know, OG, I haven't given him one all game, but I'm just like, you know, let's just throw it on them and let's see what happens. And we... I don't know. I don't know what just happened there. I didn't kill all three. I killed two. It looked like I killed all three. I was like, oh my god, did I just hit all three? And, uh, but no, I hit two. OG got the other one. But again, here we go. We're set up. We got the double treats. We got the Mr. P Porters, and we are just taking their zone so easily. And by this point, we just got to get our zone. So we, I get all excited. I start spinning. Um, OG starts spinning. We're all spinning. You know, we're all celebrating, and we're IRL at this, or you know, together. So Azari's not even playing the game anymore. He's like jumping around, you know, giving everyone hugs, just standing in the zone. Uh, but yeah, we end up winning the game. 
end up winning 3-1 and we end up winning the monthly finals for the first time this year. So this is, you know, awesome. Very, very awesome, especially after the first month uh, where we came, you know, we lost in the second round. So we came like third slash fourth. So we weren't even top two. And by our standards, you know, top two is, you know, the absolute worst we want to be. Um, but our goal is obviously number one. So this one helps out a lot. Uh, some key takeaways from this uh, was definitely that ping is so important. It's so, so, so important and competitive. And I'm not trying to discredit any other team. I'm not trying to discredit any other player. Um, Zulan, for example, lives in Puerto Rico. Um, Corey, who's also on Tribe, lives very far from every server. So I'm not trying to discredit anyone um, or on any team. But like having low ping having ping good ping to basically every server is such a carry the game is completely different and we really went like an entire week without winning scrims without being able to be anyone to traveling and just squashing everyone we only dropped one set the entire monthly finals we swept the first round we swept the next team and then we only lost one to tribe so it's a really big advantage um it's probably something we're gonna do many more times in the future it's expensive to travel it's hard but um if it works it works so um it's probably something we're gonna be doing in the future so ggs to tribe ggs to everyone that we played um the standings are gonna be on the screen right now if you guys want to see how this year is shaping up so far tribe still in first place we're pretty close in second and then we have avengers and cmg fighting for that kind of like third world spot right now um but yeah msi is two months away i think which is the mid-season invitational which is what us tribe avengers and cmg are kind of aiming for we think again we think there's only one spot so tribe is the edge right now but we are pretty close if there's two spots i mean that'd be pretty nice i would enjoy having two spots that'd be really cool but if not uh we just got to be tribe again so again thank you guys so much for sticking with me uh i'm sorry for that break literally the longest break i've taken uh since i started youtube like three years ago uh but it was kind of needed uh i'll be back i'll be making videos all that type of stuff but i'll be seeing you guys again soon uh not promising a day but i'll see you guys again soon thank you for sticking with me guys peace hey you yes you there watching this on your phone have you ever wanted to be the best the most handsome the most loved player on your team, and support your favorite creator at the same time. Well I have good news. You can be all of that and more, by using code Bobby. But you have to do it now because this is a limited time offer. Use code Bobby at any Supercell Games store.